Hey everyone, in this video we are going to solve the permutations question on lead code. So we are given an array of integers containing for example 1, 2 and 3 and we need to return all the possible permutations we can uh, create using these three numbers. So this is the question. Let's see how we can do it. So we have 1, 2 and 3 as our elements in our array. So what we'll be doing is using two pointers. So we have uh, 1, 2 and 3 in our nums variable in our nums array and what we'll be doing we'll be using two pointers i and j initially i will be zero and j will also be zero so to get the first three permutations all we have to do is update the value of j and swap the elements presented i and j index so what do i mean by that so initially i and j both are at index 0 so nothing needs to happen so first permutation will be 1 2 and 3 that's it next we'll update the value of j and move it to 2 now we need to swap the elements present at i and j index so swapping them the permutation will become 2 1 and 3 next we'll update the value of j again and swap the value of elements present at i and j index and we get the third permutation which will be 3 2 and 1 so this was our first level and after each level we'll update the value of i so initially what we did we kept i equal to 0 and uh, we'll start from we, we start j from i so j was also 0 but uh, as we reach the next level, this is the next level. At this next level, what we'll do, we'll update the value of i. So i will become 1 and j will also start from i. So j will also become 1. So i will be here and j will be here. Similarly, for all these three permutations, i and j will both point to the middle element. Now we apply the same thing on this level as well. So for 1, 2 and 3, swap the indexes uh, swap the elements presented i and j index initially both i and j point to same element so nothing will happen and our first permutation will be 1 2 and 3 and the next one will be will be updating j one step forward and the next permutation will be swapping i and j so it will become 1 3 and 2 similarly here our first permutation will be 2 1 and 3 and the next permutation will be by updating the value of j by 1 and swapping i and j so it will become 2 3 and 1 similarly for 3 2 and 1 first permutation will be 3 2 1 as it is and the next permutation will be updating by will be by updating value of j and swapping them so it will become 3 1 and 2 so if you see so in this particular level we get all the per possible permutations and this will be our answer so this is all well and good we are not using uh, any another array we'll use it. we are using the same array nums and we are just swapping the elements to create the another array so but how can we do this in code so for that we'll be using backtracking how so let's see so Initially, we have i equal to 0 and j equal to 0. So what we'll do, we'll perform two things at this particular point. We'll swap the elements presented i and j index and call our backtrack function again. Passing it the incremented value as this is the next level. So the value of i will be updated by 1. So passing i plus 1 to our backtrack function and then swapping it back again. Swapping the back, swapping i and j again. So what will be the base condition for it? When will this whole process of swapping and storing will stop? It will be when our i is equal equal to nums dot length. When this condition is true. What we'll do, we'll have a separate uh, result variable, an empty array, and inside that, we'll push the nums array which we have right now. So this will be our base condition. Until i is equal to nums.length, 
will keep swapping and in keep calling the backtrack function again in by incrementing the value of i by 1 and then swap the variables again so let's see so let's dry run this and see how it will run so this whole code swap backtrack and then again swap this whole code will be inside a for loop which uh, will contain j equals to i j is less than nums dot length and j plus plus so this whole this three lines of operation will be performing inside a for loop so let's try run this initially i will be zero j will be zero will come here i is zero j is zero swap i and j nothing will happen because i and j both point to same index then we'll call our backtrack function again remember this for loop and this if condition this space condition this, these both are inside this backtrack function so when we'll call our backtrack function again with updated value of i so at this particular point here i will become 1 and j will also become 1 so i will point here j will also point here next again inside this for loop j will be 1 j is less than nums dot length which is 3 j plus plus swap i and j i and j both point to same index nothing will happen call the backtrack function again this time incrementing the value of i one more time so in this particular level in the next level i and j will point so i will point here and j will also point here okay so this time i is 2 and j is 2 then again a for loop we start from i equals to 2 from for j equals to 2 to j is less than nums dot length which is 3 will swap uh, i and j both point to same index 2 and 2 so nothing will happen then again we'll call our backtrack function now this time with updated value of i so i will become 3 and this base condition will hit so now at this point our base condition has executed our i has reached nums dot length so we'll push the nums array inside a result variable so let's say we have a result variable here inside it we'll push our first permutation which was 1 2 and 3 now after this backtrack so so this i equal to 3 level is complete is completed now now we go back this is where the actual backtracking comes into picture so we'll go back here i equals to 2 comma 2 this one was executed so now this time we'll update the value of j by 1 so when we update the value of j by 1 what will happen we'll swap i and j first so i is at 2 index j is at 3 index so we'll swap them it will become 1 3 and 2 then we'll again call our backtrack function so once we reach there we call our backtrack function again so up to here i was here j was here next time when we call it again our base condition will hit i will be equal to nums dot length and we'll insert the first one these and we'll insert the second permutation in a result array which will be one three and two so this whole backtracking tree is completed now so now for this iteration same thing will happen i is here j is here so i is j i is one j is also one again swapping will happen both are at same index so nothing will happen we'll call a backtrack function again so for this we reach this particular point i is here j is here so again for loop start from j equals to 2 to j less than 3 j plus plus we swap again both are at same index nothing happens then we call the backtrack function again this time a base condition hits and i is equal equal to nums dot length we push this one as well in the result array so 2 1 3 now we go back and this time we update the value of j by 1 so j will move to 3 next again we swap i and j it will create 2 3 and 1 so i will be here j will be here and next time when we call backtrack for this permutation we'll hit the base condition again and then we'll store 2 3 1 in our result array so this will be the whole approach doing so will generate all of the possible permutation the time complexity for this solution will be n factorial dot n similarly space complexity 
will also be o of n factorial dot n so this is the drawing explanation let's see how we can do it in code so let's start first declaring our results variable so let's call it results it will be an empty array next we'll have a backtrack function so we'll call it backtrack it will take an index we'll call it i and at the end what will happen we'll call our backtrack function passing 0 as the initial index and we'll just return the results as a final output so now let's write this backtrack function so first write uh, so first our base condition so if i is equal equal to nums dot length if this condition is true then we need to push the array to our results variable so we'll push nums dot slice to create a copy of whole array slice zero and we'll also return from here else if this condition if our base condition is not execute which means i is not equal to nums dot length we need to run a for loop so for let i sorry for let j equals to i and j is less than nums dot length and j plus plus inside this for loop we need to perform three things first uh, we'll call a swap function we'll create this swap function soon which will take three things uh, the nums array the current index i and j next we'll call our backtrack function again so backtrack passing it the updated value i plus one then again swapping nums i and j to restore the to restore the array now let's write this uh, swap function so uh, so outside this permute function we'll write function swap it takes three parameters nums i and j we'll store the nums at i in a temporary variable then we'll swap them so nums at i equals to nums at j and nums at j equal to temp cool so this will be the whole code let's try to run this it's working let's submit it cool so that was it for this video thank you for watching